Catch Amazing Minds, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah There's no lie I will hold you Come over Forever be my lover Oh my name best I can pull you look at you Call me Jake Ho 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 <laughs> Christmas season I'm excited for this show. How are you guys doing? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. You're welcome to Amazing Mind, Zambia's first late night show. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Please don't be ninja watchers. Subscribe. Yeah. So today is a Friday Bible Talks. We are continuing um, a series we began a couple of weeks ago. Let me say a couple of months ago. We gave you guys time to digest it before we can bring you a part two. Uh, but I'm here in studio. Uh, did I tell you that Monday shows are for political discussions and Wednesday shows are for the educative segment? Yeah. I've told you now. And Friday is for Bible Talk. So today we are continuing with the pre-Adamic world. I'm here with Reverend Walter Mwambazi. Uh, one of the friends of the show, a show's favorite actually. So if we don't finish this part today, then we'll definitely have a part three. Rev, how are you doing? Brilliant, Dan. How are you doing? And good evening to your viewers. I hope you well. <laughs> oh, it's evening for me, but you guys could be watching it anytime. So good evening, good morning, good, e good afternoon. Oh, yeah. And good night. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're welcome. I missed you. Same here, Dan. It's been a pleasure. It's been long, though, and I'm glad to be back. And by the way, the last show, I had a good number of my friends who sent me some to my bones. Said, ah, oh, really? Prayer damage preaching is <laughs> total heresy. Heresy. I said, oh, yeah, okay, I won't argue with you. I agree. <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure some must have sent you the scripture that says, before the Lord comes, the great falling away must first uh -huh. occur. <laughs> but then they don't know I am the owner of that particular teaching because I do days of no yeah, days yeah, of Noah, yeah. where I tackle the four greats. So the great uh, lie, the great setup, the great... Uh, reset and the great appearance. What is the great appearance? The appearing of the Antichrist. That's ah, the great appearance. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you subscribe to pre tribulation rapture yes, or yes, post tribulation? Yes. No, no, pre. Pre tribulation. Yeah, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in the pre tribulation. Although I'm not dogmatic, but I certainly lean heavily towards the pre, pre trib view. Uh, not even the mid trib, pre trib. And, and my argument has always been God Himself said, um, was challenged actually by I believe it's Abraham. Yeah. Five far beat from you to punish the righteous with the wicked. <laughs> uh -huh. And then oh, yeah. he went on to also say in Isaiah, come in for a moment, come into your cha my chambers for a moment so I keep you from the plagues that are about to fall on the earth. Now some people have argued and said that throughout Christendom, yeah. Christians have suffered, been martyred, tortured, and gone through hell. I agree. Yeah. But I think there's something profound in the book of Revelation. When you study the plagues that are coming, these are at a whole other level. Mm. I don't think the world has experienced whatever the book of Revelation speaks about. I just don't think we have. I mean, I look back in the past. Yes, the Black Plague was terrible. There's a number mm. of events. But, <clears throat> you know, the Bible speaks about asteroids falling on the earth. And oh, it does? destroying a quarter. Of, yes. Wormwood, when the angel throws that stone from, mm. from, 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 from the heavens. Mm. It destroys a quarter of the earth's life. A yeah. quarter. Mm. And I, I've been studying um, a lot of astrophysics lately, mm -hmm. just trying to understand. There's actually an asteroid headed for yeah. Earth. They are approximating 2030. Yes, there's quite a number actually. They've yeah. been just some of them actually have even been hiding the information, so we don't know. Do you know the interesting thing about that though? Mm -hmm. uh, if you study Jesus' words about this generation will yeah. not pass before, mm -hmm. um, you know, Israel became a nation 
1947, right? 48, I think, yeah, 48. 48, 47. 48, but they say due to the changes in the in the calendar, there is about a six-year gap. Mm. So it should be, uh, it will clock 100 years. Because of the changes in the calendar, it will clock, it clock 100 years at somewhere 20, 20, 20, 2037. Mm. 2037, somewhere there, or 38. Yes, now... Why not 40? Oh, the calendar. The, like yes. Okay. So if we were to assume that Jesus is saying this generation, More referring like referring to the generation when Israel became a nation, yeah. then there is a high likelihood we might see the Son of Man coming very soon. It's, it's a possibility. I mean, I never yeah. argue. I'm not dogmatic about it at all because I always say, you know, uh, when you look especially at Scripture and study it, they are pretty much, <clears throat> especially prophecy, eschatology. Yeah. There are essentially three major lenses. So you've got the historicist, you've got the preterist, you've got the futurist views. Mm. And these three views each, you know, interpret according to the lens. And then on a, on a, on a higher level, you've got the premillennial, postmillennial, and amillennial. Mm. And these, again, especially premillennial and postmillennial, they have a lot of scripture that support. But I think premillennial has the heaviest scripture. Now, the funny thing about all these interpretations is that when you go into history, can you fit events in history to these particular revelations in, in, uh, in the book of Revelation, especially in light of what we call a figurative interpretation? Mm. Yes, you can. So, so it's always a, tr a tricky one. Mm, Everything mm. can be fitted. You know? <laughs> and, and the Preterist view was actually written by a Roman Catholic uh, priest in the middle of the first millennium. Yeah. So he's the one who brought the Preterist view. So he basically tied every event in scripture to some past event. So, so the Antichrist is Nero, you know, that kind of thing. Mm, mm. So, so, so again, highly debatable. Christ hasn't been for 2,000 years. That's a long time, even by biblical standards. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's, here's my thought mm, on, mm. on that particular, when, when you say 2,000 years is long, even <laughs> by biblical standard, that's so funny. My thought is Jesus Christ right now could be telling them the story saying, oh, yesterday I was in hell. Yeah, true. Yeah, because... True. You, a day. Yes, I, I always, you know, as I said, I've been studying uh, astrophysics. Mm -hmm. Um the Bible talks about God dwelling in the north yeah, yeah. in many, po many parts, uh, of, parts the scripture. of the scripture. Actually, even the, the, the takeover, the whole Luciferian war. Yes, he says, I'll ascend to in the north. Further, in this, further point of the north. Now, you know, the interesting thing is that the, the way the earth has a north point, which is the north pole, mm -hmm. the celestial world has that point as well. I agree. And it's called um, Polaris. Yes. So Polaris is 448 light years away from here, nice. which means to get to Polaris, it will take us 10.6 million years. I hear you. Now, my question is, if we assumed that there was a geographical location to get to God that took that long to get there, mm -hmm. then it would mean that, because what, what that means is that Polaris is 10.6 years million years. ahead, yeah, a million years ahead of us. That's right, because we're seeing it 10.6 million years ago. Yes, so we are we are greatly in the past. Yeah. So if Jesus, for example, went to Polaris, then he would be saying, uh, it, it's it's very easy for him to say yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because the time gap, the time difference. Yeah. In so fact, I, you know, I always, I'm, yeah. I'm, in fact, I hear you. Uh, actually, for me, I always have this uh, great amusement when we start looking at the physics. Yeah. And we're going to mess with the physics because what you have to understand first and foremost is that mm -hmm. God transcends all these realms. So we've got yeah. the microcosm, we've got the macrocosm, and then we've got the metacosm. So God dwells in the metacosm, which is the realm beyond this one. Now, what's so interesting is that science has shown that this realm mm. is actually a digital reality. That was <laughs> mentioned in 1995 in the New Science Journal. A, simula a simulation, in a other words? Digital simulation. It's written right there. Because what <laughs> happened, let me tell you yeah. why they came up with that conclusion. <clears throat> As the technology increased, they were able to point these things, these uh, telescopes, and look out there. And that's th this was Hubble. I think Hubble is the one that existed at that time. Hmm. So they pointed Hubble into a point in space, and they took pictures over six months. Yeah. Amazing photos. And I'm talking about pictures with a point the size of a pin. Hmm. The size of a pinhead, actually, sorry. The hmm. size of a pinhead. Anybody who's seen a pinhead, it's tiny. Okay. It's tiny. Maybe it's about 10 millimeters. It's very small. Not 10, 10 millimeters. Yes. Yeah. It's tiny. It's quite so, small. So, yeah. 
And they kept Hubble pointed in that space for one week. And when they developed that picture, there were over 150 galaxies in that point. Yes. Wow. There's even a picture for it on Google. Just Google it. Wow. 150 galaxies in that point. Now, <clears throat> that's not even the interesting part. Yeah. The interesting part is when they started to look at those galaxies, they realized that all of them were rushing away yeah. from Earth, rushing away at half the speed of light. Mm. So what was more interesting is that this, by the following day, many of those had disappeared. They were no longer visible. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Now, mm. these are galaxies, by the way. We're not talking about mm. planets. Yeah. We're, not talking yeah. about, we're not talking about stars. We're not talking about um, solar systems. We're talking about galaxies. galaxies. So some of these are like, what, 500,000, 300,000 light years in diameter. Yeah. <laughs> That's how big these things are, right? Yeah. Because like the Milky Way, 100,000 uh, light years across in diameter. It's massive. Mm. Now, here's where things get interesting. When they looked at these and now they were going away, they were bamboozled by the speed at which they were going away. But when they began to measure, something even more profound happened. Yeah. They realized that even with shutter speeds operating at a thousand shutters per second that's really high speed you know it's like your your cameras and you do yeah. slow-mo yeah, yeah and and people to understand a thousand frames a second it means if you run a frame per second it would be over one hour to finish that because mm. it's a thousand shutters. So, ah, it's like nothing. So, so it's really slow. It's very slow. Mm. If you slow it down to one frame a second, mm. it's a thousand seconds. A thousand seconds is, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. A thousand seconds is, is six by 60 is what? A thousand seconds by 60. Mm. To make a move. Oh, ha, the math. <laughs> I think the it's brains about, have just. I think it's, it's, I think it's about maybe 16 minutes. Six, yeah. uh, that's a thousand divided by 60 yeah, would be 16, 16, 16 times six or 17, somewhere there. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere, is, somewhere, but, somewhere around so there. Let's go by 16.666. Okay. So 16 minutes. Mm. So imagine that one shot, that 16, that, that one second shot with a thousand frames can be watched for 16 minutes if you're watching a frame a second. Mm. 16 minutes to finish that one second. Mm. So they did that. And guess what they discovered? Yeah. Oh, this is the one that <laughs> they discovered that even at that rate, these galaxies were actually moving. Like it's here, it's there, it's there. And that's one frame. Mm. So a thousand frames. Mm. So 16 minutes, each frame it's moving. But here's what blew that's, them all that's, away. That's serious speed. No, it's very, it's, it's half the speed of light. So yeah. this thing is going. So it, even at that speed, it's still moving. You can see it's moving. Now, what blew them away is when they then measured the rate of movement, they discovered it is not continuous. What does they, that mean? It, they discovered it starts, it's, stag, it's, it's uh, static. It's, it's like, it's not, I don't know uh, if that even makes sense. Also, it's, it's going, like uh, state phase, phases. Yes. It's One. like it's like when it's you like do hopping. it's like when you do uh, animatronics yeah. using uh, stop 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 action stop yes, action yes, yes. dummies uh -huh. move it a bit film move it a bit film then you have the stop action okay I understand that's the effect they were that they were seeing which blew them away they say why is there stop action when we are keeping these things trained in that direction at that level mm. then they measured the stop action do you know what they discovered mm. it's quantized. What does that mean? Uh -huh. So if you're a musician, to quantize music means to make the music drop into specific time signals. So mm. if your, so your music is a four by four beat, mm. it means you've got four beats per bar. Mm. Uh, that's difficult to explain unless you're a musician. Who reads music. I, I understand beats. So you've yeah. got bars. Mm. So you've got... That's four bars. Mm. One, two, two three, mm. four. Now, in quantizing... Even if you play out of time, you can clip, uh, click the computer and tell it quantize and you give it the time signal, then it will drop all the notes and everything perfectly in time with the time signature. That's called quantizer. 
That's interesting. Yes. Now, do you know what they discovered? Yeah. They discovered that the planet, sorry, not the planets, the, 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 the galaxies are moving at quantized levels. It's not moving f- uh, through what we call a random, consistent. So it means slope. it's very, it's, it's timed, it's, 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 it's deliberate. It's, let's put it this way it's pixelated. Ah. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. So the, wow. Guys, the guys were blown away. It's pixelated. That, you know, that, that bring, begs me to. That gives me a question, usually. When I think of this material world, and I know for the viewers, this will be a very deep discussion. It's very deep. It's very uh, <laughs> I know. I think of... Um, is, your, is your sound okay? Mm-hmm. It's okay, no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so many times I think of... Have you ever watched the movie Contact? Yes. The one for J- Jane... Uh, what's her name? Um, yeah, I know it. 1997. Matthew Broderick and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signal from space and then it's a 3D signal and then... I actually think that movie is um, quite... is quite. It's quite scientifically sound, yeah, because it's based on Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan is the one who wrote that story. Carl Sagan was a very famous astronomer, uh, worked for NASA, and he was mm. the founder of the SETI, you know, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence uh, Program. Mm. So he did quite a few programs around space and stuff. Very, very intriguing guy. But did you... What struck me the most about that movie is the device they made. Yes. It resembled something in the Bible, the Ophanim. I don't know if you've yeah, studied. Yeah. yeah. And from Ezekiel's vision, mm-hmm. when he saw the Ophanim, mm-hmm. they were... He said they were so high, they were dreadful. Yes. In size. Yes. So firstly, that tells me something about the size size differences in the realms. Yeah. I think when you talk about pixelation, yeah. I feel like we're a really compact world. Yes. And the reality of what's out there is really big. Very. And then also, um, the reason why that movie strikes me, uh, I know this may be a bit off topic, but I, I believe the orphanim has a role to play in our transportation from this realm to i believe so too and let me tell you why yeah when you study the bible did you know that the biggest investor in search for extraterrestrial intelligence and uh observatories is the vatican oh okay oh yes many (laughs) so for example mount herman in uh in the u.s that that observatory is actually funded by the vatican so the Vatican has a lot of interest. They put a lot of money into, into space research. Okay. Why would the Vatican do that? Now, what's even more interesting is that where their observatory on Earth is sitting, which has got the most powerful telescope run by and funded by the Vatican, yeah. is actually in one of the most powerful spiritual points on Earth. Okay. Yes, it, it belongs to the Indians. I'm not sure which ones. And uh, when they wanted to put that there, there was a big deal over it because the Indians protested saying, the American Indians Mm. protested saying that that's a special point for their ancestors. Now, those of us who've studied and understood what they're talking about, these are what we call Lee lines or energy points on earth. Yeah. And uh, for those who understand the hermetic principles and and, and laws governing the spirit world, Mm. they know that there are specific points on earth where there was a high concentration of an opening into the spirit realm. And usually with the technology that was given by the fallen angels that descended on Mount, uh, is that Mount Hermon, Mount Hebron, Mount, I keep forgetting which mountain it is. They, they, are, we, are we talking about uh, the, 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 the edge the of the gods? The, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so those guys, when they descended, they gave technology to humans on how to access the realms you're talking about. Yeah. And they had special um, technology that allowed people, you know, man to open these doors. So these doors are the same doors that uh, Nimrod was building. Ah, Babel. Yes, and Babel. So yeah. that, that was the door. And that door would get him into the very throne room of God. Huh. And that's why. You see, so he was building a tower that would reach the heavens and get into the very realm of God. And and so it's not a tower. It's not, otherwise the Burj Khalifa should have been. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not yeah. a physical building. It's a door. It's a door. So mm. a lot of ancient uh, writings show that men had been shown the technology to open doors into this realm. So, mm. for example, the so-called interstellar travel yeah. is really just opening violating the laws of physical nature <clears throat> to open doors into other realms. And, and I believe it's it's very doable because if you think about, conceptually that is, if you think about quantum entanglement or what Einstein called spookiness at a distance, yeah. spooky action at a distance, you realize that what's basically going on there 
is that they are manipulating space time and they're using the realm of the quantum, uh, you know, uh, the, the quantum realm rather to manipulate and open these doors because it's only in the quantum realm where there's entanglement which can work over a very long distance. And the powering object of that is thought. Thought. So it's traveling at the speed of thought. Mm, I, 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 from my study and understanding, yeah. the spirit realm is governed by thought. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And so with thought, you can be anywhere. So the key is how do you harness the thought? It sounds strange until you realize that Elon Musk and all these guys working on Neuralink have actually started working on that. I mean, the, I yeah. think there's a, I think recently there's a technology they still haven't finished working on it, but they are actually getting people to think, and then it's interpreting the thoughts into words. Yeah, I've heard that of projects that they are doing right for babies as well. Yeah. Uh, where when a baby is crying and making sounds, they are interpreting that into. In two words, they're trying to. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a project. But like can that. you imagine that they are interpreting thoughts, and the thoughts are not far yeah. from the words, and yeah. they are doing using powerful algorithms on an, an AI. Yeah. So it's not far fetched to say that in the next three to five years, they are trying to use that for the purposes of communicating with people who are paraplegic and all these stories, you know, injured or whatever. But what's really ah, okay. Okay. yes, yeah, that's yeah, what it's yeah. for. That's what they're saying. That's what they yeah, but, but the reality is that this is all just another level of getting into the mind realm. Mm. And you and I, uh, Dan, you know, we have talked about the pineal gland. Yeah. And that the pineal gland is the third eye. It's the one that opens the spirit realm. The difference between people who believe in Jesus Christ and operate through the Holy Spirit and people who operate using their own doors yeah. is that when you become a born again, in my opinion, especially when you become, uh, you know, spirit filled, I believe the Holy Spirit activates the pineal gland and controls that process. So it's mm. not controlled by the person, it's controlled by the Holy Spirit. So it's quite different. In in, in, in my view, in though, theotic, what, what's your view of the spirit mm. of a prophet is subject to a prophet? Aha, that's what I want to say. Yep. Even though the Holy Spirit controls it, he still allows the man to, uh, it's not a to takeover where the man is not, you know, in charge. Yeah. But the challenge with the ap apotheot apotheocentric uh, position is that it is man manipulating that door by themselves. Mm. So they are open to all manner of, um, what can I call it? interference from the beings that operate in that realm. Exposure. Yes, because mm. those beings are always looking, especially demons, not fallen angels, but demons, they are always looking for a body to possess because they need to express. They have these hungers that they must express and they walk around, they move around in that realm with no bodies. So they are They looking, once had bodies. Eh? Yes, they once had bodies. They were the Nephilim of old. Yeah. So they, they, they look for bodies to express these passions. And so when they find an open door and the person that's playing in that realm doesn't understand how to seal the entrance to his consciousness, they quickly enter that. Yeah. That's why a lot of people meddle in these things end up stuck raving mad. And we have enough <laughs> stuck raving yeah. mad. It's not that they've gone mad. They've been demonized. Yeah. Stuck raving, like ah, screaming, running around naked. Shouting in the street. Like the, the demoniac. The, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's stark raving. Mm. Man. Like completely out of control. Yeah. So that is because they have become demonized. So there are very few people who've understood the rules of how to control the demons. They, they've understood the symbology, the insignias, the sigils to use to protect themselves. But you see, a lot of people in dabbling, they, they, they don't work with guides. Because uh, in the in the occult, they are guides. And the job of a guide is their experience. So they know how to help you navigate that space. Now, personally, as a born-again Christian, I don't subscribe to any of that because I believe either way, manipulation by the demonic world is manipulation by the demonic world. Yeah. So, so what one needs is to be totally surrendered to Christ. And then Christ is the one who gives you through the Holy Spirit whatever abilities that you have. So those who see in the spirit, it's a gifting. And because it's under the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, you're completely safe. There's no entity that can come anywhere near there yeah. because you are sealed in him. Mm. You are protected. There's a hedge around you, so you're safe. Yeah. Whereas for people who go on their own, they're literally venturing. 
It's like a trespasser just moving around. And so these beings, they pick that energy and it draws them in like a, like like dung draws flies. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, the illustration is not very good. It draws them <laughs> in like insects drawn to light. That's a better illustration. Okay, okay. Yeah, when you switch on a light outside, all the insects want to go to the light. That's what it mm. does. So that oh, is that what it, happens with what they call those flying insects? Yes. So so what it is is when you come into that realm, they see your aura, they see your energy, they are attracted to that, and that's what they want. So they come there. So people who are not guided then become displaced mm. by the demonic because the demons will come, uh, and and you know many times you're told that when you go into that realm, you find a guide. There are guides in the spirit world. You find your guide, and normally in African tradition you'd call them a totem, but you see the totem of your family, so you find a guide. Now, that guide in the spirit world is different from the guide you who teaches you on the ground when you're learning with them how to do this astral projection. So when you meet that guide in the spirit, if, if, if uh, you're with an expert, they will show you that that's your guide and yeah. then you connect to them. Yeah. So technically, it's, it is said that those protect you. So uh, would, that, but, would those be a replacement of your angel? Sort what of, happens sort of, sort when of. someone meets a guide? Where's their angel in that That's moment? That's the problem. So the angel now is in a bit of a of a, <laughs> of a fix. <laughs> yeah, because he does try every time to lead you towards the gospel, lead yeah, you towards yeah. salvation, protect you from many dangers in life because they are always working around you all the time. Yeah. But you see, the the further you drift into the dark world or the dark side, the the less and less the angel has authority because that angel is really the one that keeps trying to bring you to the light or yeah. to bring you to understanding. But if you of your own accord choose to, I mean, for example, this young man who recently committed suicide, the, the, then, you know, named uh, so many people and did crazy stuff. Um, if, the, Nathan Mitty, yeah, nothing. if you follow that story, what you realize is that that guy had been actively dissing God. Yeah, very much. Act Actually, on my last show, I talked about him and I said, uh -huh. oh, Nathan died and went to hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is true. <laughs> yeah. And you see, if you are going to actively diss God or disrespect God, there's only so much that the grace and mercy of God can reach out. Hmm. There comes a point where you shut it out completely. And that's the part that's scary because there's a part in the Bible which says that you can quench the spirit. Yeah. Actually, first, first Timothy 4 verse 1 in the last days, many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and having seared their uh, conscience uh, with as a with a hot iron. iron. That's right. Yeah. So this, the danger is that when you are in that space, the fire of God begins to be quenched. And if you continually diss God, this Nathan keeps dissing God. So what it does with every diss, the demonic powers of darkness are gaining better and better control of him. Mm. Until finally... He reached a point where now, uh, already they were there in him, definitely. But they reached a point where the most powerful... They, 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 com they convinced him. Yeah, and mm. he now did what he did. And, you know, people all think that this is stuff we're far-fetching. Read the Bible and see what happens in John chapter 13. Jesus says to, to, to what's his name? Judas, that which you must do, do quickly. Do quickly. And then there's a very scary verse there. It says, and Satan entered Judas. Exactly. So all this time, like Jesus, he had not entered. Satan was, you know, I always think about that. Mm. Satan was standing there. Yes. The whole time they were yeah. having supper. Yes. Satan was standing, waiting. Waiting. And this also reminds me of the many times that Satan tried to enter Jesus yeah. through these tricks. Yeah. But Jesus always had a, a closed door. And I guess also maybe uh, a lesson for the viewers out there that may be wondering exactly how we seal these doors of entrance uh, would be by staying within the purpose of God. Uh, right. and, and this is an example Jesus gave us. Staying within the purpose of God blocks that entrance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think beyond that, Dan, also, <clears throat> when we're in Christ, we remain safe in Christ. Yeah, but if we choose, but, but but the truth of the matter is that first you have to be in Christ, uh, and then when you're in Christ, that's a whole other story. But for those who are not in Christ, they are always teetering on the edge. Yeah, but you will be amazed what the prayer of righteous people, the prayer of family, and just prayer of good people who really, for some reason, are burdened to pray about you. How much those prayers actually work? Yeah, people have no idea. A lot of us are saved today, I believe, on account of somebody's prayer. There's no way. Uh, I mean, I don't subscribe to the predestination, predetermined, these are the ones elected, those are the... No, no, I don't I, subscribe, I don't subscribe to, that to that either. I don't subscribe to that either. So we're in the same boat. I really don't because I always argue and say, if you're saying that, then you're saying 
what you know god created people to go to hell and yeah. if you're saying god created people to go to hell then my big question is if the, if it's not their choice then why the judgment yeah also it it begs the question why did jesus have to go to hell to preach exactly to the spirits that were in prison yeah if th- truly there were people that were destined to go to hell mm. i believe actually there is god is so gracious more people than we think will end up in heaven i agree and in, in fact rev no, uh, let's 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 get into into the subject i would like over the phone um last week we talked about an interesting subject mm. and i know due to time let's get into it now okay. but we talked about elohim yeah, yeah, yeah being the pre-adamic world we are trying to understand creation and what may have happened the things we don't see plainly mm. you said some stuff about elohim and i have questions mm. but what is your interpretation of in the beginning god created the heaven the heavens and the earth in light of the name of god that's used there yeah first and foremost is very very interesting when you look at the the hebrew the word is elohim and you notice that that word elohim occurs throughout from genesis chapter 1 verse 1 all the way through to genesis 2 verse 3 yeah up to there it's elohim 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 <laughs> then when you get to genesis 2 4 it changes and a lot of people don't know this it no longer uses elohim now it uses yahweh yeah and in the english it's rendered god as elohim and then lord god as yahweh yeah so A Lord God is the preeminent ever existing self existing one. Mm. That's Yahweh. There I so am. He, so so yeah there I am. So it literally the same as as uh, El Elyon Adonai most high. Mm. Now what's so interesting is that Elohim when you dig into it what you discover is that first it relates to celestial judges yeah or authority but it also has a plural sense gods and that's really really interesting. Mm. So so it's not god, it's gods. Now the argument obviously in uh, Genesis 126 is it says let us make god. Oh, sorry, let us make man, man in, our, in own our own image and likeness. And uh the first immediate view for us as Christians is the trinity. Mm. But That's really interesting because And I'll tell you why why view. I still hold on to that view. Yeah. Uh, but but the, but just for the sake of those following. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really interesting that it's Elohim as in the Trinity. But then who's writing this? Is the <laughs> Jews. <laughs> Jews do not believe in the triune God. They believe God is one. Mm. It's right there in Jude the Lord your God is one God. Mm. You know, you shall love the Lord with all your heart your soul The mm. Lord your God is one. Even Jesus said it, oh yeah. Israel, the Lord your God is one. One God. So, it's been a huge argument. Now, so when they were writing that even their understanding was not trinitarian. Oh really? No. So what was their understanding then? Their understanding is God's exactly what it says. A council of gods. So then what would this mean? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Yeah. to see is there precedence because you know these things you have to look for precedence yeah all right so if gods are convening and talking as gods is there a precedence yes there is mm. daniel chapter 4 yeah, yeah yeah yes the watchers the watchers and it tells us clearly <clears throat> that the, the judgment of, of nebuchadnezzar was not done by yahweh it no. was done by elohim the gods is is that the word used there no watchers mm that's the word used what what's the original word do you know what no i have to interesting that you raise it i have to go check and yeah. see what word is used but when the bible uses watchers it's actually relating to angels yeah now you see the funny thing is when you go and study the the whole idea behind the celestial beings and the names of god and the elohim you actually discover that there are seven seven gods or seven angels because in 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 instances rendered angel other instances rendered gods mm. or god mm. but these are gods subserving the yahweh the most high god mm. and there's a reason it's called the most high god because there are gods mm. that's interesting you know i've i've always wondered there are many scriptures where the bible says and gideon saw an angel yeah. 
and God said. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah or, or, and you know what's even more interesting? Yeah. You know that angels, there's precedence in scripture of, of the angels refusing worship. It's there. Yes, it's, it is. Like enough precedence. Daniel, you know, John in, the, in Revelation. Though, yes. it, it, by the way, mm -hmm. was that an angel that John tried? I don't think that was an angel. No, where John wanted to bow. Yeah, you know, I, you know I don't think it's an angel. Why don't you because he said, I am one of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, that yes, that's what he said. So, is this the spirits of just men made perfect? No, no, no. May I believe he's an angel? We'll have to go. <laughs> but it's no. very interesting. But we need to go. But, but he but actually you know, does but, say that. He yeah, says, true. I have uh, the testimony of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ. So, but, but then don't you think angels have the testimony of Jesus? I do not think so. I actually do not think they understand the concept. You see, that's why, the reason why I hold on to Elohim being the triune God is because... Uh, I want to read you one one nice one nice scripture. Mm. You need to give me like three minutes to explain my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, when I was when I was a child, I had a a, a vision or a, a dream where uh, God came came to see me. He had the face of my father, mm. but I asked him, "Who is God?" And he said. <laughs> and I know for uh, viewers out there, church police, doctrine police, yeah. <laughs> he said, God is a group of spirits. Mm. That's what he said. That was when I was a child. And growing up now, I only remembered this vision last year. And I said, because I went to ask my dad, dad, did you ever tell me this? He said, no. So I went back to, because I've got a stack of books where I wrote every dream mm -hmm. from the time I was a child. Nice. Now, the interesting thing is, over time when I began to study, I realized that God has a... Um, I, would, I would define God as a cluster of spirits. Mm -hmm. And I'll read you a scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came mm -hmm. and for whom we live. Mm -hmm. I believe you can see the scripture on there. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. So the scripture here is telling us that from God came all things the father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it says and one lord through whom mm -hmm. all things came jesus mm -hmm. so now if god is where all things came from it means we came from god the angels came from god mm -hmm. the different worlds came from god mm -hmm. so god is the source of everything yeah this would mean that if each individual spirit my spirit your spirit we all came out of god it means god within himself is a community a cluster of spirits. And so spirits shoot out of him. Mm -hmm. And in this very way, I believe that when you talk about the triune nature of God, God is distinguishable. There is God, mm -hmm. but he's also on the throne. So I believe God is self-sufficient. He never moves from his throne. Yeah, true. true. Yet, yeah, if he wants to pick that, those keys there, he, he will get it. up from his throne, pick them, and still be on the throne. That's right. And so I believe, for example, when God appeared to Abraham, he appeared as three people, and two of them went to place judgment on Sodom. So even if, and later on, he tells Moses, uh, he, tells, he tells Moses, I appeared to Abraham not by my name, mm -hmm. but I appeared to him as the Lord God. Yeah. I appeared to him as the Lord God and not by my name, Jehovah. So I believe the revelation of the triune nature of God was really truly revealed to the world through Jesus. Yeah. But it pre-existed that revelation. No, for sure. For and sure. that's why I also talk about when Moses enters the cloud, uh, he says, the Lord says to Moses, go and tell the people not to break through the barrier, lest the Lord breaks forth on them. Mm. So he's speaking in the third person. It's That's like, right. and when Moses enters the cloud with the elders, they dine with God. Yes. They even describe what he's standing on. That's right. Yet later on, he says, show me your face. Yeah. So I believe there is God's multiplicative nature. In fact, for me, to be honest with you, I agree with everything you say. Mm. The only part I'm saying is the Jews had no understanding or revelation okay. of the okay. Trinity. So therefore it makes it very interesting that when you look at that term Elohim, it is very difficult to relate it to the Elohim, so to the triune, triune God. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean the triune God is not scat uh, uh, scattered all over the Old Testament. He is very much so. And, and in fact, I mean, to carry your other discussion further, show me your face. 
And the Bible says, and he hid him by the cleft of the rock. Oh, yeah. God walked <laughs> past. Already all three have appeared. There. Yeah. The cleft of the rock is Jesus. The yeah. hand that covered his eyes is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And God himself walked and he saw the back of God. So it's so a very, very powerful scenario. And you start to see it everywhere. And I like your Exodus illustration of the, the 70 elders. Yeah. They ate with God and no one died. And that's so profound. Yeah. So, so you begin to realize, wait a minute, who is it that could see God and not die? Who wrestled with Jacob? And who came to meet Abraham? Yeah. So you start to see that that's Jesus. That's the pre-incarnate uh, or the, incarnate, the pre-incarnation of Christ. And that's the one who appeared. He is the same one that appeared to Manoah. So mm-hmm. Manoah wants to, 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 to ask the name. The angel refuses to name the name, but he says, place an offering. So, so again, the Bible oh, yeah, does not yeah, contradict yeah, yeah. itself. So oh, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if no angel took an offering, so that could not be an angel. Ah, wow. Oh, so that was... Uh, um, that was Jesus. Yeah, oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So Gideon's, Gideon's case as well. He yes. said, prove to me that you're the Lord. Yeah. He says, place an offering. Absolutely. Um, so, so you realize that it takes an offering. Mm. Because what, what Monoa wanted to do with his wife is sit and eat with him. Mm. Then they said, okay, give us your name. And he didn't give him a name. Mm. But then finally they said, okay, so what do we do? Say, so bring your offering. Mm. And as the Bible says, as he burnt that offering, he, God did a wondrous thing in that site. Yeah. And Manoah freaks out and cries and says, we have seen God. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And the wife said, no, no, no. <laughs> if you were supposed to die, you should have died, but you're not dead. Mm. Now that was profound. You see, because Manoah understood you can't see God and live. Yeah. And, this so, is, and, yeah. and again, so the question is that it's not that God is contradicting himself. We're seeing different people. And that's why even for Jews, we can argue all day. You know, it's like the Muslims as well. Mm. You can argue all day because the Muslims say, no, that was that was Jesus is the most holy, la, 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 but he couldn't die on the cross and therefore he couldn't be the son of God. And so the argument back to them is that, but what's the judgment? What was the actual judgment issued by Caiaphas, the mm. high priest? Mm, mm, what mm. the actual terms of the judgment? Mm. Very clear. Jesus quoted the messianic scripture from Ezekiel and from, uh, from uh, you see, that's so interesting. He mm. quoted it from Enoch. That's why mm. now today it's hit me. Yes, that's the fourth <laughs> person to quote Enoch. The, I've always said it's Peter, Paul, and Jude, Jude yeah. who quoted Enoch. But mm. I just realized, no, no, no. Jesus what, what did quoted, he say? He said, you shall see the son of man come down on the Descending clouds. in the clouds yes. with his holy ones. That's, that's from the that's book of Enoch. Enoch. Yeah. That's the book of Enoch. Mm. So if Jesus himself could quote Enoch, why is that book missing? But that's another topic. Yeah. Uh, let's not go <laughs> <laughs> That's another topic. Yeah. But you see, that's so interesting. And so the high priest rips his, um, his thingy and says, I don't need any more evidence. You've seen a mere man claiming equality with, with God. God. And Jesus did not argue. He did not dispute. He did not say, no, don't yeah. say that. He kept quiet. What does that say? That mm-hmm. meant he agreed. Yeah, he agreed. 100%. And, and, and the, and the and high he took priest, the punishment yeah. and that's how he was killed. Mm-hmm. So the judgment was he claimed to be God simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, since he was sinless, even by Muslim standards, since he was considered <laughs> miraculous, even by, sin, by Muslim standards, mm-hmm. and since he was considered... Uh, perfect by Muslim standards. Mm. The virgin birth by yeah. Muslim standards. Yeah. By Muslim standards. Yeah. How then does he refuse to dispute the title being put on him? Because the argument they like saying is, show us a red, red letter. Show us a red letter where <laughs> Jesus says. Yeah. I say, no, no, he doesn't say, but he does not argue against the high priest. What's that? There are so many things Jesus said. For example, the enemy comes to tempt him. Mm. Uh, bow down and worship me. Yeah. And shall uh, not. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord, the Lord your, your God. God. Now, that, that's Ooh, interesting. That's who, was, who was the enemy tempting? Uh, uh. And that was his response. Yes. No, 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 don't tempt the Lord your God. Yeah. Who was he referring to? Uh, you can't tempt God in heaven. <laughs> no. He was dealing with Jesus. He was, yeah. yeah. And th- there are many things that Jesus said that suggested that. Though I do um, agree with uh, there's There's a part also that I can't deny mm-hmm. that there are angels that appeared almost in the capacity of God. Yeah. And we can almost say these were angels. For example, uh, God says to Moses, I will send an angel to go before you mm. uh, in a pillar of fire and by in a cloud. Day and a fire by night. Yeah. Uh, cloud by, by day, day and, and fire, fire by, by night. night. And he says, but be weary of him mm. because I have put my name in him yeah. and he will not uh, um, overlook 
your transgressions. Yes. So what God is saying is, I have given this guy autonomy yeah. to act like me. Yeah. And I don't know whether this would be also the theme of how angels appeared, where they are referred to as the Lord, whether this is God sending them in his own capacity. It's difficult to tell, very, very difficult to tell. But uh, from the look of things, I don't think God sends angels in, um, in his capacity 100%. I just mm. don't think so. Because Hebrews says, where did God say to an angel, sit to the right hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? yeah, yeah. So, but I, I mean, angels, but ministering flames. Mm. So that's where we even get deduced that angels are made of the element of fire. Mm. Man is made of the element of earth. Mm. So there are three other elements. There's, an, there's, there's beings of the element of water, there's mm. beings of the element of uh, air, mm. and there's beings of element of wood. Yeah. So five elements. Mm. I actually believe there are worlds of these elements. Yes. Yeah. And so when God created the first realm and the first angels, they were made of fire. So we see fire throughout. But you see, you have to understand that in the en ancient technology, the ancient knowledge of the ancient angels, some of whom are bound in, tar in Tartarus. Yeah. These angels taught technologies beyond fire technology. So we are very familiar with fire technology. But I can tell you with certainty that there must be technology around water. Mm. There must be technology around air. Mm. And these technologies are profound and powerful. And I believe in the days of the ancients, they operated with those technologies as well. So they were not restricted to the fire technology we know today. All our technology do today is based on fire. Mm. Yes. Think mm. about it. Electricity, That's interesting. Is That's interesting. Yes. But wow. their technology is based on water. So when we talk about the water spirits and the water world mm. and all these water things. Yeah, that's, that's another technology. Yeah, imagine that when God brought the flood to wipe yeah. out the entire world, yeah. uh, he killed everything but the, fish. the, the aquatic world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and that's, don't, that's forget, don't forget yeah. that uh, there's the famous legend of Atlantis and the fact that these worlds are oh, yeah, yeah, under yeah, the yeah. waters. Yeah, yeah. So these waters had a whole technology around them. But the one that blows me away is the air technology because air technology is the one that deals with harmonics. Mm -hmm. So harmonics is another technology. I can tell you that the power to speak speech is based on harmonics. So mm. if you go into the hermetic uh, principles and the, and, the, and the natural laws that are hidden, they are words that were literally taken away from man. Words mm. taught by angels that could manipulate the very nature of space, time and fabric itself. Wow. By words. Could that be what Paul referred to? When yes, you say, when you by say words it, which could not be uh, mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even believe that the words are what you call spells today. Mm. So the, just that the spells go by levels. So there's low lying level spells like just my words speaking to you, words, I repeat certain words over and over. They can manipulate and change you completely, just the words. But mm. when you go at higher realms, you start to speak different languages and those languages can manipulate the literal fabric of space and time. So this is what explains, for example, how the pyramids could have been built. How could they cut them so perfectly? They were speaking. And that's what that's for me explains <laughs> <laughs> no, Rev has shocked the crew. <laughs> no, but think about this. Yeah. Out. The, yeah, I hear you. We had 50 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we okay. Time, right? <laughs> time. But you know, let me close with this one. It is amazing that the Bible says, and God came down, you know, Genesis 11, 6. And God came down and observed what mm. they were doing. And he said, and let me read it because it's too powerful. Yeah. No, let me read it. This one, this one is profound. Yeah, and we'll, then we'll now, put it up on the screen. Yeah, and then you see uh, how it ties in with my harmonics thing, the technology of air. And the Lord said, indeed, listen to these words, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. Mm. And this is what, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld. Mm. So what did he do? Confuse the language. Confuse the language. That's it. La language is deeper than we... It's so powerful. That was my argument in the other podcast when I was arguing with the other gentleman. Yeah. I said language is one of the most difficult conundrums to explain when it comes to arguing for against creation. Mm. When I bring the, the, the topic of language, it ends the discussion because mm. language needs a cipher. Mm. Language must be spoken. It is in code, and then there must be a cipher to decipher the words so that you understand them. Now, nature itself, the Bible tells me, listen to this, mm. 
nature groans for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. Mm. Why is nature Rev is groaning? being politically co- correct there. They are no daughters, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just adding it. Sons of God. Otherwise, this, imagine, imagine. Yeah. It's groaning. Yeah. So why is it groaning? Because there are words that must be spoken into nature. To mm. activate. To activate. And when God restores creation, that's what will happen. Mm. So that, that's why I always say this. That's why there's this amusement that humans have with superpowers and superheroes. Yeah. It is basically people remembering their Adamic state. Yeah. I, I always, uh, I had a pastor here last week. Mm. Uh, we were discussing the gift of faith because we're doing a gift of the spirit mm. uh, series. Mm-hmm. So we're discussing the gift of faith. And I asked him an interesting question. I said, when you talk about spiritual gifts, they were, they were not described as such in the Old Testament, but we, yeah. we can see that there was a manifestation that's similar mm-hmm. to, to, to spiritual gifts. Yeah. And then in the book of Hebrews, it tells us of those that have tasted of the, of the, of the heavenly gift, mm-hmm. uh, of the good, uh, the good word of God, that and they, have tasted know. of the powers yes. of the age to come. That's right. It always makes me wonder what we consider now as spiritual gifts could they be no more abilities of the powers I of the age to come? Absolutely, and beyond. And beyond, my brother. Because, for example, we have much, much more advanced bodies. Mm-hmm. So the, incorrupt, the corruptible will put on incorruptibility. So yeah. these bodies will be far more advanced. Yeah. Far more advanced. And I know he brought up a question of what would we need the gifts for? But I guess this is also where we begin to I'll, think I'll of... Answer, I'll tell you why we need them. Yeah. Because we'll still be governing on earth. I, I think beyond earth... Mm-hmm. Do you suppose we might have an assignment in other words? I mean, yes, yes. Th- no, think of Jesus. It's a yes. It's a yes. Yeah. It's not even, you don't even have to believe it. Yes. Because yeah. it's a massive universe. Yeah. And I believe God will have realms all over the place and will be ruling in these. Because there's a very strange scripture. I just can't remember it is where it says the world. Job. The book of Job. Um, the, the book of Job talks about worlds. Worlds. I, it doesn't I, say yes. the world. Even in the, Hebrews, in the New Testament. Hebrews, it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds. Thank you. That's the one. Yeah. Look, I really messed up the mic. Oh, no problem. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's the one. Yes. We understand the that world the worlds were, were formed, framed by framed the word out. of God. Absolutely. And so it's th- not world, world. world. And here's, here's my further interpretation of that mm. scripture. I know many people don't like to have such discussions. <laughs> no, because that's okay. Yeah. Um, it, there's a scripture in the book of, I believe it's Psalms, that says the, the heaven and the heavens of heaven. The heaven and the heavens yes, of heaven. Yes, yes. I believe there are more than three heavens. Absolutely. Although we at least know Revelation by three. Yes. But what, yes, I, I agree with you as well. Yeah, and and you know he, I, Ephesians says, mm. Jesus, he that descended also ascended above all heavens. Yes, yes. If there were three heavens, the language may have been different. Yeah. He ascended above the two heavens. He mm. ascended, I don't know, the language may have been different. No, I agree but, with you. But I believe that as we ascend into different heavens, yeah. they are, you know, the worlds, the way we talked about the different elements, it's like the way, you know, on earth, Everything on earth that determines our life, our success, is dependent on the earthly material. Yes. The metals and the earth itself. Correct. And I believe when we go higher, we begin to find different materials yes. that determine the life there. Yeah. So let's say if the foundation of that world is gold. The so being, by the yeah. way, do you know what's so interesting that you raised the topic of gold? Yeah. Because gold is a source of energy. And uh, in, mm. in, in, in outside biblical source, we know that when uh, the Anunnaki came on earth with the Nibiru, mm. their major mission was... What's your thought on the Anunnaki, by the way? Anyway, finish your thought, then you... For me, it's the same story. It's just... The age of the gods? Different. It's the, yeah, it's the guys from Mount Hermon. It's the 200, it's the watchers. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Anunnaki, mm. 100%. Okay. I also believe, to a large extent, that they were also part of what was going on with the mess in the pre-Adamic world. Mm. Yes. So, so could, those be, could those be an angelic race living yes. in a different heaven? Yes, and remember that they, me, I call, me, I actually adopted the term uh, elder race. So there's a whole yeah. realm of elder race. Mm. Elder, so these are our elder race or elder yeah. brothers. Yeah. They, 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 we are part of that family, but we're the last. And what makes us mystifying to these angels is that we are the weakest among that, but the one gives us the greatest honor. The because. greatest potential. And you know why? Mm. Because God made us procreate, something that no angels can do. Mm. That was painful for them. What 
I've always wondered the issue of procreation. What does that mean then for the angels that were able to procreate with the daughters? Because of- they came and defiled the, the bloodline. So they had to come and merge somehow with the humans. Uh, they could not do it in their own, in their own. own state. Hmm. So they had to t- descend and come into the human state and then use what I believe is technology to cause that to happen. Because they didn't just do it with angels, I mean, with humans, they mm-hmm. did it with animals. With animals, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. So, so we have a whole realm of demonic half-breeds Actually, in, they, the, in the animal world. The book of Revelation mm. talks about it. Yes. It says when the angel opens the pit, yes. they will have uh, the hair of, uh, of, of, of women, uh, the correct. teeth of lions, the, teeth of lions and, uh, yeah, the tail of the air. Are, these are part of those beings that were created. There's a book which is very mysterious, which was found amongst the, the, the ruins in the Dead Sea called the Book of Giants. It's a very difficult to decipher, book to decipher because it's not I, clear. I have heard of it. Yes, it's Glimpsed not clear. It's, a, it's in batches, but basically it insinuates that these angels were also doing experimentation with the animals. That's why the Bible says, and lo- the Lord looked upon the earth and all flesh was corrupt. All yeah. flesh. Do you know the, the interesting thing, Rev? I know we are trying to conclude, but yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we need a part three. I know we need a p- exactly. Yeah. First Corinthians fifteen mm-hmm. describes that there are different kinds of flesh. There's the flesh of fish. There's the flesh yes. of and they're yes. terrestrial and yes. celestial. Yes. But God said that statement. You said all flesh yeah. is corrupt. Yes. Very interesting. So how does animals become corrupt if yeah. they have nothing to do with what's going on? Yeah. It's because they were also messed by the by the angels. Yeah. So so the so so Daniel oh, that's Daniel. What's his name? Noah <laughs> had to come up with this supernatural ability to collect the ones that were not dis- they were not uh, corrupted. Mm. So I don't know how that happened. And then there was a whole process around bringing them into the boat and there's all this thing about feeding them. So so I, I always somebody asked me that question the other day. They said, "So where was all the food that came to feed the animals and then how did these animals survive like the lions and stuff because they were eating each other. So which what did they eat for all those days blah blah blah." So I said, "You know what you have to understand is that the bible uses a lot of hyperbole mm. and i am very very certain that the two by two is hyperbole in scripture okay. that's my conclusion in other words it wasn't really two by two somewhere more than two mm. because they had to be sustained for six months in that thing mm. 40 mm. days of rain 150 days of of floating around and mm. finally they come out. It, it is possible because i mean when the bible talks about the five thousand that jesus fed yeah, yeah. they were not really five thousand you know what i mean yeah <laughs> So there's a lot of hyperbole in scripture. When mm. Jesus talks about the log in your eye, I mean, can a log fit in your eye? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of ways. It's like a final thought. Mm. Jesus saying, the words I speak are spirit mm-hmm. and they are life. Yeah. You know, that I had a revelation. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me yesterday about, about that scripture, mm. talking about how the material of God mm-hmm. Is, is spirit. Yes. And yes, so yes. he's made everything in his realm by his material. That's right. And that spirit is actually the word of God. That's right. Which that's why the Bible says it is through him that yes. all things were made. That's because right. that's the actual material. Yeah, that's the substance. Yeah. I agree. And 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 that word, you remember the thing I talked about the air technology? Yeah. That's what sustains us. Mm. The word of God. The, See, it's the most powerful technology. Yeah. From the realm of the spirit of God. It is his word. His word. You know, it's so profound. And that's why when you read that word, it changes lives. Yeah. We, we are dealing with a spell straight from the throne room of God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God takes this thing and then turn, he takes himself and turns himself into words. Yeah. Ah, I just And insane. then turns those words into material. Correct. And whoever gets those words, they have life. Yeah. Ah. Um, they and they shall incline your ears to my words, for they shall be healing unto all your flesh. Correct. Yeah. Do you know that I actually believe, and that's one which is a bit controversial. I actually believe that the very words of God contain everything to take us to a transcendent level. Hmm. The challenge is that we live in a fallen world and our minds and bodies are corrupt. Mm. I know when we receive Jesus, we become renewed, but not the flesh. So the flesh resists the spirit. Mm. And that's why people who go into serious consecration, and you know, this is the part that just amazes me. Do you know that even in the dark spirit, satanic world, there's consecration? Oh, really? Yes. Yes. There's fasting and setting (laughs) itself apart for the purposes of casting spells and doing powerful magic. Yes. 
You're mm. even told to stay away from women. Don't do this. Don't eat this. Don't do that. Yeah, that's consecration. Mm. But I, so I, if consecration mm. can be done in the dark world, why have we got problems with consecration in the kingdom? And that's why men who have no power in the kingdom because they don't understand the secret of consecration. Mm. When you are consecrated, you are set apart. You become holy and not because you are sinless, but because you are set apart. You see, there's a Re- difference. Rev, do, do you think... It has something to do with our understanding. You know, the Bible says, uh, strong meat is for them that are mature, yes. who by reason of use have exercised their sense- senses. But it says, uh, milk is for babies Correct. who have not understood the doctrine of That's righteousness. Right. That's right. Could it be an issue of where we are still as a church dealing with the issue of condemnation? So not just condemnation for me. It's beyond condemnation. For me, for me it's... Uh, it's, it's literally the idea of being set apart. Is it not? That? Because truth be told, we are not condemned. Yeah, but There's I mean... There's no condemnation. Y- y- but y- the truth mm-hmm. is, the flesh is still the flesh. Yes. So as long as the flesh is still dealing with things that are sinful, there's a level you can't walk in, in that mm. state. That's the... Me, I'm talking about levels. But could talk, there be me, also... Me, I'm talking about levels. Can I tell you, Dan? Me, yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember with all my heart. Yeah. When I did a 21-day fast... And I was away from everything, me as water with my human everything. Yeah. When I when I, in those days, I would meet people with beer bottles, and I don't say a word. They start crying. They beer drops. They start crying. They kneel mm. to receive Jesus. Just looking at me, not even me saying anything. I met. I remember meeting prostitutes. They cry. They receive Jesus. Mm. Just on that. But you see, when I thought about it, I said, "This is hard." How do you sustain this level of consecration? This, this is why I'm bringing in so this, you see my this, point. I'm this not idea. Saying, I'm not saying mm. that one is condemned in any way. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. I, I, I understand my sin or whatever. It I is. I mm. think the issue mm. is that people have not grasped our position with God. Yeah. The fact that we are righteous, you know, like one thing I've gotten to discover because I've I've had many moments of consecration myself mm-hmm, mm-hmm, one thing i got to discover is you see when, when when if i commit one sin that i know i have done wrong here it would take me into a state of beating myself because i'll feel condemned in that moment I agree. and what happens is it will draw me away from let's say i intended to pray at 20 hours at 18 hours i do yeah, something what will happen is i'll postpone my prayer for 20 hours but before i get the chance to pray later on i'll have committed another sin yeah. and this is this kind of buys into when jesus says it invites seven more wicked than itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the buildup of condemnation yeah, is a, quite negative. It's it's what prevents us. I believe God at this point, because God is a very legal. Mm-hmm. So God at this point is not dealing with us purely on the basis of consecration. Mm-hmm. Because to be honest, no, 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 we, we can't. To, to, to be honest, we can't. Uh, no one can make himself holy. No, but you know, yeah. this is. But we are not really talking about the holiness part. I'm talking more about well. Okay, yeah, there is that. But but what I mean is, it's more about manifesting the Shekinah glory of God, for lack of a better word. Yeah, but I think, I think that comes about by a realization of our position, regardless uh, yeah, of the mistakes yeah, we've made. true. I agree. But have you noticed that people who walk... Why... Okay, let's put it this way. Why mm. is it some, so many people go to look for powers of darkness to manifest power in the church? <laughs> because it's easier. That's why. Simple as that. It's easier. It's easier in terms of the, the consecration. consecration. Mm. Yes. But the consecration of God is holiness, purity, prayer, fasting. There's a level you need to be at. And to be honest, I think all of us who fasted long know what happens. Yeah. You start to see stuff. You start, you know, I never even used to understand the concept of smelling stuff. Yeah. You start to smell things. People come and I don't know, it's funny to explain, but you can smell demons. Yeah, because even God has described his smell in the yes. order, and he says it's like, no one should so ever use, use this, this smell. But it, yes, yeah. it's for me. Yes. <laughs> <It's set apart. laughs> so I know our time is gone, but it's just such an interesting concept. So I, me, I'm of the view that a lot of pastors and, 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 and preachers could walk in powerful manifestation of the glory of God if they lived consecrated lives. The truth is they're just not consecrated. Mm. So even if condemnation or condemn or no condemnation is very difficult to manifest the true power of God in a, in a life that is not consecrated. So mm. consecration simply, in the simplest ways, is just being set apart. Mm. These are holy items set apart 
for the use of God. For the use of God. So mm. that's the idea, being set apart. Because that setting apart, it brings a certain level of, of manifestation of God, which is so different from just the conscious knowing I'm, I'm, I'm sanctified, I'm holy. And people have tried that. I've, I've been in meetings where people, pastors are slapped by demons. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, what? <laughs> 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 it's so embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Why would the demon slap a pastor? Me, mm. I've also seen where a pastor shows up, he doesn't say any words, the people start screaming. Mm. <laughs> Until the pastor says, Shh, quiet! They mm. just go quiet, they're mute. Mm. And they, he keeps them quiet like that until the meeting is over. Mm. Then he goes now to cast them out. Yeah. No discussions. Out, out. <laughs> yes, go. You know, it's it's you know, that's why I always tell to people, I wish you could go into rural ministry, you know, go where you see the demonic at work. Yeah. And then see what consecration does. And see what compromise does. When people are in that state and they compromise, see what happens when they go in the mission. Mm. Things don't work. It doesn't mean they're not saved. Mm. It doesn't mean they're not condemned or whatever. No, they're, they're, they are free. But that fact that they violated somehow in the demonic, it's sin. Mm. And that violation comes up. And so many, I've seen so many Pastors, church workers run out of deliverance rooms because the demon starts to, to, to divulge their activities. Mm. And you know, it's so disarming. Eh? Mm. They are there, and then the demon says, You just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just leave. You yeah, know what you, you are did with yesterday. Sister Charity. Hey, Tom and Avon says, So the other workers just say, Please go, 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 because mm. we need to, because you'll be the entry point. Mm. If this demon comes out, you might be the entry point. Just mm. leave. Mm. So then they deal with the demon. And the demon can do you just scream, scream. And in instances, just leave. Mm. And it's so amazing. And, and especially those who work in that space, we see that. I, I remember one time also, again, in my work with the ministry, I bumped into, I don't know what kind of person that was. And they just said to me, you. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why I, I, I have told this even to my wife, me, backsliding, it can't happen. Mm. Because I have been personally warned by the devil three times in visions and physically. Mm. Every time they would say, you, just stay in God. <laughs> because the day you come out, we'll, we'll be waiting for you. I've been told that enough times. And that besides what I saw in my first 90 days of salvation, because I had so many visions of the devil. Mm. Yes. So these are things. So when I even talk this, I even say, me, I know what it takes to, to, to start flowing in that supernatural thing. It's just, it's work. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so draining. And you know, Catherine Kuhlman said it so well. She said, many of you admire me for what I do and how God has used me. But the problem is very few of you are willing to pay the price. Mm. There's a price. Mm. There's a price to walk in that power. Mm. And for me, what I know is it's consecration. Mm. That's interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think the mm. price has a lot to do with light as well. Yeah, yeah of the course. knowledge we have. You see, you have to do that as well. Eh? You yeah. have to read. You have to. Yeah, because you the see, word, the you things we've discussed today alone, mm. I can say maybe ninety percent of the viewers will not know. I tell you. Yeah, because how many Christians have actually read half the Bible? Very few. Very In fact, few. the Bible is the most unread. Yeah. <laughs> book out Yet there. many people condemn it, never having. Red. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we, we, we have to end the show now. <laughs> Rev, I'll be back. You'll be back yes. soon. Thank you so much for coming. We, 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 we really enjoyed this one. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I, I, I did uh, very educative stuff. Leave a subscription and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.